Top five things to watch for in the NFL draft post free agency. I know we're only a little over a week into it, but uh, most of the things that are going to happen have happened, and the big trades have happened, and uh, you've seen shakeups in the first round, multiple teams with multiple picks. As a matter of fact, uh, I like I I'm, I've lost track of the draft order, Craig. I've completely I have no idea. I know the Cowboys are at twenty four. I know. Uh, the Lions have multiple picks. I know the Chiefs. I mean, all these. There's the Chiefs now have back-to-back picks. It's 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 hard to even figure what's going on. But here are some things to look for in the NFL draft uh, coming up post free agency. Uh, number five, the Texans will show what their future plans are. Uh, in that, look, they say they like Davis Mills at quarterback, but if you've got two first-round draft picks, and I believe they have two seconds now as well. I wouldn't be surprised to see them draft, especially if one of those guys like a Matt Corral falls to their pick in the second round. Why would you not pick him and have him push Davis Mills? I mean, I like hamburgers, but if you're offering me a steak, I'll probably take the steak, yeah. you know? So, yeah, Davis Mills is fine for what he is, but they can certainly upgrade that position. I mean, he's done nothing to make you think that he's the franchise quarterback over the next few years. So, yeah, I mean, the Lovey's loaded with picks. They've got some new, uh, you know, new uh, breath of, of fresh air in that building where it, as it's been just a complete dumpster fire for like the last year or so due to all the Deshaun Watson stuff and interim coach and and all that David Culley did a really good job uh, did it did an admirable job for the roster that he was handed last year and you know they've, they've been able to, to salvage uh you know or not salvage but they've been able to acquire a bunch of picks and uh yeah i mean they're, they're gonna have a chance to really flip this roster in a major way so I'm, I'm curious as well to see you know exactly how they attack that but uh seeing them take a quarterback yeah that would come as no surprise number four aaron Rodgers' real influence on personnel look Devonte adams is gone they've got to get some playmakers so you would assume that that was would be where they go in the draft but jack and any packers fan can tell you that there's there's real no rhyme or reason to why they do what they do. They kind of uh, march to their own uh, beat of their own drum, and uh, you know they haven't won a Super Bowl and they haven't been in the Super Bowl in in quite a long time. In spite of having um, you know the best quarterback in the league, maybe um, and a back to back MVP, so they've got to do something different. So we'll see now that he's there and committed for the end run of his career. What is his influence on this, and and what are they going to do to maximize the last few years of Aaron Rodgers? Well, you know, I'm just I'm just really hoping he and Shailene Woodley continue to have a great relationship. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the most important thing is love. But no, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. That's that's, that's still such a weird deal. I, I have no idea what to make of. Is he happy now, or is he still this? Like, you know, I'm sure he's happy with the money, but like, you know, then the Devonte Adams trade happens right after that. Although that kind of got blown out of proportion, didn't seem to be that much of a factor for Aaron Rodgers, and he kind of already understood that that was going to be the case when he re-signed that Devontae Adams would probably not be around but yeah I mean knowing the Packers organization they'll turn around and go draft Jordan Love again you know in the late first round of this draft because they just do strange things like that sometimes but no they've got some work to do obviously I mean Adams starting with that um, so uh, we'll see but yeah I would think that he would have to have some kind of influence I mean why are you signing up why are you the I mean you're the guy um, so yeah, why, why would he not? But I mean, that whole situation is just so bizarre to begin with. I don't really know what to make of it. Yeah. Uh, number three, the Eagles, Giants and Packers could be movers and shakers. They've got multiple picks. that are all kind of, uh, close to, to one another, uh, which would allow them maybe to move, uh, maybe into the top 10, uh, further up in the top 10. In some cases, the Giants are already there, but maybe the Giants could move and do something. I, I also expect to see this, and this is kind of a den of this. I expect to see Saquon Barkley traded by the Giants mm -hmm. during the draft. I think that'll happen during the draft when probably second day sometime if you know somebody wanted Kenneth Walker or Isaiah Spiller and didn't get him, uh, they might take a flyer on Saquon Barkley, who's, been, who's very talented but very injured. Yeah, I mean, he is. He's, he's a walking injury, or at least has been up to this point in his career. And that was one of the concerns coming in. But, uh, yeah, I, I hadn't really given him being traded that much thought, but that would certainly be eyebrow-raising. It would be very interesting to see if maybe a, a new home would do do well for him. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the Eagles and Giants, in I mean, the Packers are definitely going to probably be moving around. I mean, like we were just kind of referring to, you know, to what extent Aaron Rodgers is a part of that remains to be seen. But they do need to make some moves to just keep, you know, 
getting Rodgers locked down and getting that out of the way was a big deal. But um, now they, they, they've got some holes to fill. Now, as far as the Eagles and Giants go, I'm really curious just in general the NFC East because, you know, you talk about that meme with the, the little stick figure and the stick, like mm-hmm. poke it, like do something. And I think you referenced that earlier this week. Uh, that's kind of what I feel about the NFC East. It's like, what do you got? Like everybody around them is making massive move after massive move. And the NFC East is just kind of kind of there. Uh, I guess, you know, Washington trades for Carson Wentz uh, was a big one. But, yeah, uh, I, I don't know what to make of the division right now. And, I, and you know, well, the draft will be great for, for kind of setting the table for, for what to really expect from the Cowboys, Washington Eagles, and Giants. Well, look, the biggest move I think has been made in the NFC East outside of Carson Wentz uh, is is the Eagles signed Hassan Reddick, and he's a yeah. good player, but I don't think he's going to flip the division no. for the Eagles. So. No, 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 no not, yeah. not, not, not that type of a player, no. Yeah, so. uh, he's, he's good, but – and that was very interesting too, you know, kind of going to Carolina and Matt Rule for Hassan Reddick to decide to leave was, you know, uh, kind of uh, – I'm, I'm thinking of uh, Riddick. No, he, he did. He yeah, was in Carolina. Yeah. He went back to – I mean, he's from yeah, Philly. He's okay. a Philly guy, so – I'm doubting myself here. But, yeah, yeah, that was kind of a telling – or was it telling? You know, you don't really know. But that was that was interesting if you were a Panthers fan. But, yeah, I mean, that that's certainly – Wentz and, and Reddick, maybe a couple years ago, that would have felt like splashes of some sort. But it feels like little drips, quite frankly, right now. Yeah, and – um, you know, the Panthers, by the way, their GM met the media today and was like, yeah, well, Sam Darnold's got to be the guy. But he said, like, they're trying to get a quarterback. They're, I mean, everybody knows it, and they're monitoring the Baker Mayfield situation, but, you know. They already had, you know, there's that report that they were, you know, equally not in, or mutually not interested. But, but hey, if, he, if it comes down to it, it might be like their, or their only choice for both hey, of them. Baker Mayfield is, the, is better than anybody they'd have on yeah, their Yeah, he's better so. than Sam Darnold. Yeah. yeah, so he can be mad at Matt Rule all he wants, but they, they can figure it out. Uh, number two, Malik Willis probably goes higher than he should. It looks like he, he had one of those pro days where people are, oh, my gosh, you know, Malik Willis. But he hasn't I, – I, I'm a little wary of Malik Willis. He's a good player player but you know is he is he a guy that needs to be in the top 10 or the top 15 i don't know i don't, I don't know if there's those guys in this quarterback but in this quarterback class but look if he gets drafted second overall by the lions and winds up being a great player then he went exactly where he should have gone but well then he'll be a bust yeah because so. that, that, that would be such a detroit move to to grab a guy who's not a sure thing but then again who's a sure thing you they know? also have two picks they have the set what the second pick and the 32nd pick so. yeah they can make they can make some moves potentially but uh yeah i mean i i i don't feel qualified enough to say whether or not he's being a little bit overrated. I mean, I do think as we're getting closer to draft time, there's kind of a buzz building over just underwear Olympics competition yeah. and, and just some throws at a pro day. But, you know, these guys are professional scouts and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not. So if they see something in those throws at pro day to get them excited, then all, you know, so be it. But yeah, a, a, you know, really super athletic dude. He can chunk it around. He can run a lot of things to like about him, but there are some question marks. So, um, you know, somebody's going to probably go higher than they should. It happens every year with quarterbacks because yeah. that's why we look back on it every year and talk about all the busts. Uh, I don't know where he'll fit in, but uh, he'll have an opportunity either way. Yeah. And number one, the Chiefs who have pick picks 29 and 30, I think package those and move up. I think they, I mean, eventually, I, I, and I may say move up, they might move up four or five picks, but um, I, 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 I would not be surprised to see them try to go, even though they signed Juju Smith-Schuster, that's a one-year deal, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, I would not be surprised to see them try to maybe get in the, you know, the Traylon Burks business uh, or, or someone like that, uh, that, that can be someone to try and replace the production, and they're going to try to do that with Juju and, and, and Marquez Valdez-Scantling, but... Man, Tyreek Hill not being there really makes me wonder about what their what their goal is early on in the draft as far as what they need. Yeah, um, I mean that's a that's a big loss, and I know that uh, Chiefs fans have probably come to to grips with it, and you know realize that hey, it's a money thing or it's a this thing or a that thing. But you know certainly they're a little bit less explosive, but they're still a lot more explosive than uh, most NFL teams out there. But yeah, I'm curious to see what they do there in that later half of the draft. So we're gonna have to wait a little while to see them actually make a pick. But if they do decide to move up, I mean that would be very interesting. I don't feel like. Um, I guess, you know, the Jahan Dotsons and, and I guess the top, top guys would probably be too high up for them to yeah. go and grab. Um, who else is there? There's, uh, you know, Jameson, Jameson Williams, Williams yeah. but he's coming off the torn ACL. So he yeah. actually, that might be one that could fall to them at that 29th or 30th to pick and they wouldn't have to move. Maybe up, that's so. something that they would. Yeah. Maybe that's something that they're banking on, on seeing how that goes. But, but yeah, I mean, they're, 
they're going to draft well. They always do. I mm-hmm. mean, that's the thing. That's you know, they're they're talked about, and kind of like with the Rams, they're talked about because of free agent moves they made and just big star players. But you look at both of them; they both drafted incredibly, incredibly well. And and that's you know, the free agency stuff you can do all day. But when you compare it with the draft picks and build that way, it just makes you know you a totally different franchise. And that's why they are where they are. And plus, a once in a generation quarterback. So yeah, they'll be a they'll be a fun team to watch on draft. All right, that's gonna do it. That's the top. 